I just assembled my Shape Poco Pro several days ago. I met some small issues during the assembly, but all of them have been fixed. In general, this is a very solid build machine. The strong X and Y rails, aluminum base table, linear rails, bit setter, star stop button are all fantastic. I will not talk about those in this video. In this video, I will show you how I fine tune the Stripogo Pro and to make it in a great condition. To do the fine tune, I used some small tools along with the CNC. I put links in the description below for most of these tools. This is a budget 1 inch digital dial indicator, which is uh, less than $30. This is a small plywood jig to attach the dial indicator to the quarter inch end mill. I cut this jig on this Shipoko Pro. This is a quarter inch end mill. This is a 90 degree V bit. I use this one because it has a sharp tip in the center. This is a one inch surfacing bit, also less than $30. And we also need a tape measure and a clamp. Okay, let's get started. Calibrating X and Y axis is to make sure we can cut the right shape in the right size as designed. If this calibration is off, our square will probably become rectangular and circle will probably become oval. The concept of this calibration is to let the spindle move a specific distance from control software then measure the actual movement and compare the actual with the value we input. If they are not the same, then change the setup in control software. So first of all, we need to know how to manually control the movement of the spindle. We can do so through the MDI interface in Carbide Motion. In MDI, we can input one line of G-code to let the spindle move. Here we input G91, G0, Y, minus 700. This command will let the spindle fast move 700 mm along the Y-axis toward the front. If we input G91, G0, X700. This command will let the spindle fast move 700 mm along the X axis toward the right. For more information about the meaning of the G code, I put the link in the description below. Then we can measure the actual movement of the spindle. To do so, we need to mark the start and end point on the spoil board and then measure the distance between the two points. I put the 90 degree V bit in the router and use a paper with an X mark on it to mark the point. I lowered the bit to be very close to the spoil board and carefully check if the tip of the V-bit is aligned with the two lines of the X mark on the paper. Then I use the blue tape to tape the paper to the spoil board. After marked both the start point and end point, we can measure the distance between them. If the measurement is not equal to the input value, which is 700 mm here, 
we need to adjust the machine setup through MDI. We can first check the current machine setup. To do that, we need to turn on the log first, then type dollar dollar in MDI. Then all the current setup will be shown in the log. Dollar one hundred and dollar one hundred one are current setup for the x and y axis respectively. By default, they are both forty, which means the step motor will move forty steps for each millimeter. Now we need to change these two values to compensate the difference in our measurements. Here is the equation. New setup equals existing setup multiple input value divided by measurement value. For example, if our measurement value for the y-axis is 699 mm, then the new setup is 40 multiple 700 divided by 699, which equals to 40.06. Then we can input $101 equal 40.06 in MDI to set the new value for y-axis. After that, we can use $$ to verify the new setup is stored. So this is how I calibrated X and Y axes. After we calibrate X and Y axes, we can square them. The setup is pretty much the same, and we just need a little bit math here. If we let the spindle move 700 mm along X axis, and then move 700 mm along Y axis. Then the distance between the start point and end point shall be 700 multiple square 2, which equals to 989.95 mm. Then we can measure the actual distance. If the actual is larger than 989.95 mm, then the angle between the x and y axis is larger than 90 degrees, and vice versa. To adjust the angle, you need to loosen the shoulder bolts on two y rails and move one of the y rails towards front or back to compensate the angle error. I will now show how to adjust it as my machine is pretty square already, you could check out the official Shapeoko Pro assembly video from Carby 3D for how to do so. <coughs> Trimming Z axis is to make sure the Z axis is perpendicular to X Y plane. If Z axis is off perpendicular. The milled surface may have small steps between cutting lines. To do the trimming, we need to use the surfacing bit to surface the spoil board first as a starting point. Then, we attach the dial indicator to the quarter inch end mill. By rotating the end mill manually and checking the dial indicator output, we can know if the two directions along one axis have the same readings. If not, we need to adjust the spindle along X and or Y axis. To adjust spindle direction along the X axis, we can loosen the four shoulder bolts on rotor mount and then force the rotor leftwards or rightwards. To adjust the spindle direction along y-axis, we can loosen the four shoulder bolts at the end of the gantry 
and we need to do so for both left and right side. Then we can force the rotor frontwards or backwards. After trimming, we can surface the spoil board again. This time, I don't feel any step between cutting lines in both X and Y directions. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please thumb up and subscribe.